Here we see the ram air turbine in the context of the aircraft. The first thing I'm going to do is use Creo Mechanism Dynamics to find the loads that this green mounting bracket are subjected to. We use mechanism constraints to form the joints in the assembly. The analysis results gives us the loads that are transferred into the bracket through the pins. As the analysis runs, you can see the force vectors represented by the magenta arrows. Once we know the maximum loads, they can be transferred into the structural analysis in Creo Simulate. Here we select the loads that are important to us and transfer them into Creo Simulate. Looking at just the mounting bracket, we run a static structural analysis to see what the resulting stresses and deformation are. In this case, the maximum stress is at one of the mounting holes. And the maximum deflection is at the upper most pin. We now have all of the information that we need to set up our generative design analysis. Here we have a multi-body part in Creo that we will use to define our generative design analysis. These bodies include volumes for design space, pins, attached locations, and exclusion volumes. We now select the generative design application. First, we designate a design space for the analysis. Once selected, it turns transparent. Next, we select the volumes that represent the preserved geometry. These are volumes that we don't want the optimizer to change. Once defined, they turn blue. Now we define the excluded geometry. This is a volume where we want to avoid placing any resultant geometry. Next, we add the loads and boundary conditions we used from before. We fix the lower attach points we define contact between the pins and the preserved geometry, the blue rings. And we apply the loads to the pins. Now we can define the design criteria for the analysis. We can specify the target volume percentage or the target mass. We can add additional constraints such as manufacturing strategies like milling molding or additive. Here we've added a material property and additionally a symmetry constraint. We now have all of the information we need to run the analysis. As the analysis runs, we get real-time feedback on the progress of the geometry creation. This allows us to assess the validity of our analysis setup. In the upper left-hand corner of the graphics window, you can see the analysis statistics, including the current step and the current mass of the design. We can watch the progress of the analysis. The support structures are thickening in certain areas, thinning in other areas, and we can rotate the model and watch as the analysis progresses. Once the analysis is complete, we can take a look at some results. First, let's have a look at the von Mises stress plot. Here we see the maximum stress has been reduced by 68%. Now that we have an acceptable result, we reconstruct the generative body into a B-Rep solid. This step automatically wraps the body in a freestyle surface and solidifies it. The resulting solid model can be easily modified.
Now that we have the reconstructed BREP solid model, we can use Creo Simulate Live to validate the analysis results that we saw earlier in the generative design tool. Now we prepare the model for additive manufacturing. The first thing we want to do is run a downscan analysis to find the optimal orientation for the model on the build tray. Here we have positioned the part on the build tray in the optimal orientation and Creo has generated the required support structures using materialized magics. We can preview the model before printing perform print validation checks, and print directly to connected printers. If your printer can read and use slice files, Creo can create and display the layers used for printing. Here we see the slices displayed on the model. Going back to the design space used to produce the generative design, we can add a manufacturing constraint for 2D machining. The result in this case is, are two separate parts that can be easily machined. Reviewing the generative design criteria, we have added a linear extrude constraint relative to the central datum plane. After reconstruction, you can see that these parts could be machined with a variety of conventional methods like water jet or milling. Because we are working with Creo, we can make modifications to the resultant geometry, either by modifications of dimensional values, if available, or by using the flexible modeling capabilities in Creo. Finally, we can quickly check the structural performance of the design by turning on Creo Simulate Live at any time to get instant analysis feedback. In the past few minutes, we have derived the load case for a new Ram Air turbine mounting bracket generated an optimal design based on weight and structural requirements, automatically constructed a BREP solid model from the results, verified the structural performance of the design, and prepared the new design to be additively manufactured, all within Creo Parametric. In Creo Parametric 7.0, PTC has introduced a new application for generating optimized designs focused on different manufacturing methods. This application is called Generative Topology Optimization, and it's powered by Frustum's topology optimization and simulation algorithms, allowing you to explore different design solutions based on critical goals, materials, physics, and manufacturing constraints. Let's take a look at the new application and explore its capabilities. On the screen is a bracket part, which we'll use to walk through the optimization workflow to show how easy it is to set up and generate your designs. Under the application tab you'll see a new icon for generative design. Selecting it will open up a new ribbon and generative tree which we'll use during the optimization process. The first step in the optimization is to define the design space for the optimization study. The starting geometry represents the volume for which the geometry will be created within. Selecting the icon and the body you'll see that it is turning transparent, representing that it's the starting geometry. Next we'll choose Preserve Geometry. This represents the bodies that will not be affected by the optimization design. Selecting the three bodies, you'll notice that they'll turn blue. Lastly, we'll define the Exclude Geometry. This represents certain bodies that lacked as obstacles during the optimization. Selecting the body, you'll see that it'll turn red, representing Excluded Geometry. In the model you'll notice that a load case has already been applied to the two shaft bodies. As they are not designated as preserved or excluded geometry, we'll need to create a contact interface between them and the starting geometry. This will allow the loads to be transferred from the shaft bodies to the starting body to be used in the optimization. Now we'll add a new load case. First we'll add a constraint to the slot hole by selecting all the edges. Then we'll create a new force load applied to the bottom of the preserved geometry surrounding the shafts. For this load we'll define it as a 3500 Newton force in the positive direction. 
Now that we've defined our design space and our physics, we can create now one or many design criteria methods for the optimization. The design criteria captures the design goals and objectives, geometry constraints, manufacturing constraints, and materials to be considered during the optimization. In our example, we'll set the goal to minimize the strain energy of the design with a target mass of 30%. We'll also apply a design constraint of planar symmetry about the right datum plane. For the material, we'll simply leverage the material that has already been applied to the part. With all that set, we can now run the optimization. As the solver is processing, you'll dynamically see the results appear on the screen as it's progressing through its optimization. Once finished, you can utilize the validation tools to interrogate the results by showing the stress and deformation fringe plots on the model. In addition, you can also show the model's min and max values represented by blue and red circles surrounding the particular areas on the model. Lastly, you can also move your mouse over the model to probe the values at that particular location. Once satisfied with the optimization, you can output the results to a new model through the reconstruction process. Reconstruction will create a fully featured solid model preserving the analytical geometry and optimization results. This will allow you to continue to evolve your design and utilize it downstream. If a change is required, you have full access to editing any features in the part or changing the optimization definition. In our example, we'll modify the sketch used for the excluded geometry. Once you edit the sketch and regenerate the model, you'll notice that the generative design feature is out of date. Editing the design study, we can rerun the optimization or make further changes. In this case, we'll edit the design criteria and add the option for build direction. Selecting the Add Constraint pull-down menu, we could choose Build Direction and choose the top datum plane as a specified build direction plane. Changing the critical angle from 45 to 35 degrees, we could click OK, and now we're ready to rerun the optimization. With the new results shown on the screen, we can perform reconstruction and update the part. Using generative topology optimization will increase engineering's productivity and improve innovation. The result is a design which is optimized for efficiency in manufacturability in a way that a human designer could not easily produce through traditional methods. So this is just a little torsion bar. You could imagine this being many things. It could be, you know, the stem between your bike and your handlebars. It could be a lot of different things. But say it's a part in a broader assembly and some requirement has changed at your interfaces, just like that. So if your interfaces change, so does the generative model, and it still satisfies your requirements. So the interplay of parts in an assembly are very much at work here, and the ability for teams to uh, contribute their knowledge into these larger generative models without having to remodel the CAD of these shapes. Also, you can see how easy it is to even say, change the manufacturing process. So right here, I'm just going to say, you know what? I really want this to ultimately be a cast part. So I'm going to put draft on it with maybe a five degree draft angle. I'll tell it dire the direction I need it to go in and say OK. And it won't be this crazy looking shape. It's now going to be a draft design. That'll take a little longer to update because it's, uh, it has to chug a little bit more. There's more computing going on. But this is uh, us moving into this generative era of CAD. And here you can see it's converged on a design with a parting line here and the draft angle we specified.